Right, hello everyone, and welcome to my review of Sanctum 2, which will be released on Steam on Wednesday the 15th of May. Sanctum 2 is a tower defense game mixed with a first person shooter, and this genre was first introduced in the original Sanctum back in 2011. Like in every tower defense game, you have a period with no threats in which you set up your array of towers uh, with attacks ranging from rockets to simple slows and stuff like that. But instead of setting up your defenses, hitting start, and sitting idle as you watch the chaos take place, you actually play a meaningful role, if not a little bit too meaningful, in Sanctum 2. A main aspect to point out at the start is that Sanctum has always been a big game on maze building, as I'm going to call it. Instead of there being a set path which you build towers around in most tower defense games, you're regularly presented with an open field and a number of blocks, and you can build your own path for the enemies to follow. This brings in a great deal of fun watching the creatures kind of walk around in a big circle around the map, but surprisingly makes the game rather difficult at times. Sanctum 2 does a good job of bringing together lots of different weapons and towers, making it initially feel very fresh and fun. As in many tower defense games, the story doesn't play much of a role. It ends up just being an explanation for why the scenery changes each level, but in Sanctum 2 it actually starts very strong. With level 1 you're thrust not into a field of turrets, but into a facility of some sort. It's a bit wrecked, but your friendlies seem to all be in different moods. Some stood on an alien cheering about how they defeated him, and others warring in a corner. The facility you're in then seems to be attacked, and you actually have to fight off some of the aliens just using your gun uh, before you even get to the tower of defense aspect. But then you walk out into a field with turrets at the ready. Uh, but I was actually quite impressed by this first section. The rest of the story, however, is displayed like a comic, which I guess is cool and a little bit different, but doesn't really give you the depth that you want. It talks about how the aliens from Sanctum 1 have returned despite being driven back, uh, almost as if they didn't finish what they started. A bit of an easy way to drive a sequel, but then again the story does kind of intrigue me. I find myself primarily wanting to know who the aliens are, who the person I'm playing as is, and also the other three in the group. The little bits of dialogue and comic form seem generic at first, but later on they do start to invoke mystery and does actually get me pretty interested. I really think they could drive it forward and make it play a bigger role by having more areas where you're not actually using the towers, but like the start where you're exploring a building just using the FPS side of the game. In my defence, I have only got about three quarters of the way through the game, so that may change later on. At the start of each level, you'll be presented with a choice of four different characters to choose from, each with their own weapon and special abilities set for that character. On top of that, you can choose a secondary weapon, a number of towers, and a number of perks. Secondary towers, tower slots, perks, and perk slots are all introduced as you level up your character via clearing waves and missions as opposed to which maps you've beaten. Just to let you know, tower and perk slots are how many of each you can take into each level. Now one of the things I will stress is that for this game you will want to choose a character and weapons you're most comfortable with, as your impact on the enemies will most of the time be much higher than that of the towers you place, but I'll return to that point later. For each level that you increase you will either earn a new tower, a new tower slot, a new perk, or a new perk slot, or an array of any of them. I do like this system as it does mean if you're struggling you can replay missions to unlock more powerful things to help you, rather than being stuck and doing the same thing over and over again, uh, and is definitely a good step for Sanctum 2. The towers in any tower defense game are actually rather important, and you do need a variety of towers to suit everyone's playstyle, and also to allow people to experiment with different combinations and such. Also you need upgrades that keep the towers stacking damage and effects throughout the level as waves get more difficult, and also just to make them look awesome. Also it would be nice if you were able to place more than one each round. From memory this was all present in Sanctum 1, but some parts have just disappeared in this game. The variety is there, but comes a little late with towers being unlocked pretty slow, but once they're unlocked there's definitely a range of abilities and styles to choose from. Unfortunately for some, you can only have a certain number of tower slots, so you need to decide on what sort of style you're going for before the level begins, uh, and this does make you think and be prepared which could be good and could be bad. Now something I probably will say a few times in this review uh, is my problems with the resources system. At the beginning of the building stage of each round, two items will drop from the sky and give you a set number of tower bases and a set amount of resources. The tower bases are kind of your standard block which you can choose to build mazes with or place towers on. This part I like is it generally gives you a large amount and they're never short in supply so you can build really complex mazes and basically use them however you want. The resources however are in very very short supply. Typically a tower costs between 1 and 200 monies, and each resource drop generally gives you between 1 and 250 monies. That's just about enough for one tower around if you want that tower to do any damage. Upgrades then cost a little more than the cost of the tower, so as usual the upgraded tower does more damage. Well, it does more damage than the original tower, but does far less than buying two of the original towers. Now onto a couple of numbers. If you're not into the numbers side of stuff, then sorry for this, it won't be long until we get back to shooting things. But I do feel I need to explain this a little bit better. Now for your bog standard tower, which is the first one you unlock uh, when you start the game, the statistics are 115 damage, the rate of fire is 120 and with a 2.5 range. 
Now this tower costs 140, and when you upgrade it, it goes to 685 damage, the rate of fire slows to 60, it has a range of 3.27, and the tower cost goes up to 310, that's a cost of 170. So the overall damage output of the non-upgrade is 25,800, which is the damage times the rate of fire, uh, and the upgrade is 41,100. Sounds pretty good, but to be honest, it's not really. If you buy two of the bog standard towers, you get twice the rate of fire, uh, and in some ways a little bit of increased range because you can spread them out. So two normal towers gets you a damage output of 51,600, which is 10,500 more than the upgraded, uh, and also only costs 280 rather than 310. It also acts the same for other towers, but I don't want to bore you for too long. Basically, to conclude, you want to buy more towers rather than upgrading the existing ones, which goes against most other tower defense games, uh, which took a while to figure out, to be honest. Before you do, the game is very difficult, and you don't realize why everything isn't dying, because in the tutorial, it does teach you that you want to be upgrading towers rather than building them. But once you do realize, and you just build quantity rather than quality, it starts going a little better. I really do wish they made this clearer at the start for new players, as not many people would bother putting two and two together. But to make up for this, you can actually sell your towers for the exact same amount you bought them. So every single round you can pick everything up and then place new stuff to suit the enemies you're facing. Whether you like this is going to vary on how much time you have. But personally, I don't change where the towers are every round because it does take quite a long time. Uh, to recycle them and then go and place them back up and upgrade them and stuff. One more thing about the upgrading is that you can only upgrade your tower twice, and in this day of tower defense games where you're able to change a small boat to an aircraft carrier with a bunch of aeroplanes, which comes from Balloon's Tower Defense 5, uh, through a series of six upgrades, this makes upgrading a one barrel gun to a three barrel gun over two upgrades rather disappointing, and they don't even change that much in the look. In Sanctum 1 they changed colors and their appearance changed a little bit more, but for Sanctum 2, looking over your towers, you basically have no idea which ones are leveled up and which ones aren't. You have to hover over each one to actually see if you've upgraded it, because the visual features are so small. Now, final point on towers, they tend to do far too little damage, and are unable to take care of the standard super weak enemies, let alone the bosses, and it becomes much more of an FPS with a bit of help from towers than a tower defense game with a bit of help from you, which I don't think is quite how they advertise it. The enemies are actually a very nice part of Sanctum 2, albeit some are copied from the original, they actually still act very well. Each enemy has a different weak spot which forces you to play in a different style, also some now have armor which only certain turrets can fire through, which makes you choose your turrets wisely each round. It actually gets me in a panic when I see that next round we got four of these tanks coming, uh, and I have no armor piercing turrets because I know that I can't deal with them all by myself, and it actually gets you very involved in the towers that you're placing. Bosses also become pretty standard in later levels, most of the time these can break down your towers and just walk through your defenses, which at first can be extremely, extremely frustrating, and something in previous tower defense games I have never liked. But after you know where they come from, you can take all your towers and move them away from where the boss is coming from, because you do lose no money from buying them back. And these can deal with the other enemies while you take care of the boss, as you can pull aggro from the boss and just make it follow you around, basically. It just brings a new level of strategy to the game, which is quite refreshing, uh, but also if you're not prepared for it, then can be very, very frustrating because if the boss comes first, it will break through your defences and then everything will just run through. Uh, they don't go around your maze that you've built anymore, so you do have to be prepared for it uh, and check what is going to be spawning at the beginning of each round. The multiplayer aspect is quite odd in Sanctum 2. You're able to invite players at any point into your game, with enemies seamlessly gaining more health and towers gaining more damage dependent on the number of players in the game. This is especially nice when someone you don't know joins your game and starts helping you out. You can also do the reverse, by hitting quick game you can join a random person's game and just start playing with them. Unfortunately there are a few problems that don't seem to have been thought of, uh, which does kind of break this down a little bit. No matter the number of players in your game, only one of each item drops at the beginning of each round, therefore only one person can acquire resources and tower bases, and therefore only one person can actually place towers. This leaves the other one to three players idle and in the hands of the one. I would much prefer to gain fewer resources personally each round, but everyone gets some to use as they please, rather than leaving one person with all the power. To me, one of the big advantages of multiplayer was that you overall have access to more towers, but since only one person can ever build them, it does seem a bit odd. Now a couple of random notes that I just thought I'd throw in. They're things that just seemed to get my attention as I was playing through the game, so I thought I'd let you guys know. The woman that you play as must have a breathing problem because she is so loud when you sprint for like more than one second, and apparently this means she must have a multitude of tuberculosis, lung cancer, pneumonia, and one working lung. 
You happy now, Carol? You can run while reloading, which is nice and increases the pace of the game. Uh, and some enemies may get stuck on things, which is a bit of a glitch that I've seen two or three times in my like eight hours of play. So it isn't a huge problem, but is in there a little bit, but they'll probably fix that in a day or so. On the good side of things, you've got the drop in multiplayer, which is very accessible and fun with no way for people to finish their game before you can join. The gunplay part of the game is fast paced and very diverse, with you having to place shots accurately on weak spots and so still requires skill. The game is ridiculously difficult, which is both good and bad, but also because of this the length of the game is increased dramatically to around 20 hours probably, and that doesn't include the replayability of the multiplayer. Because of this extreme difficulty, it is very very rewarding when you do succeed and does make you pretty damn happy with yourself. Then on the bad side we do have the very weak story, the tower defence aspect is very slow with an extreme lack of resources, uh, which leads to not much tower defending but more you just running back and forth killing everything with your gun. Even if you do manage to place enough towers they do very little damage uh, and makes them seem a little pointless. You have no ability to upgrade your gun which was in Sanctum 1 and was pretty big in that. Uh, and I think would actually be very very useful in this game as you seem to be using your gun so much. If the game decides that you're online then you can't actually pause the game. You'll hit escape and everything will just carry on. So unless you finish a round uh, which can take up to like 10 minutes you can't actually pause the game and go away and do something. Which does seem a bit strange but you can go into offline mode but the only time that's happened for me is when someone tried to connect to me uh, and then disconnected. It then decided that I was offline. Uh, and then they couldn't connect again, so a few bugs there, but I'm sure they'll be fixed pretty quick. The thrill of huge numbers of towers and all of them getting bigger and more badass as you go just isn't there in this game because of the lack of resources uh, and the cost of the towers, and because of this the single player can get boring quite quickly. Unfortunately Sanctum 2 isn't really as exciting as it should be. Running and gunning while towers fire a load of sheer aliens should be brilliant fun, but a few aspects just bring it down. The multiplayer needs a lot of tweaking to become viable for random online games, uh, but could be very very strong indeed with the survival game mode that is in the game. For the price it's actually a very very good game and with an extremely lengthy campaign and despite all its flaws it's still very very fun and to be honest that's what it's meant to be. It's not quite as good as I expected for a sequel of Sanctum which was such a nice game but for the price you can't really let the problems in this weigh it down. It's not going to be a revolutionary tower defense game and it's not going to be a revolutionary first person shooter but hopefully it will inspire a new genre which can get much much bigger because it is actually very very fun to do. Uh, especially if you do have multiple people to play with, so if you do have a group of people that are able to get this then you'll probably have a lot more fun than if you're just going to be playing it on your own. Now I really do hope that the problems will be fixed soon and this game can really shine because it is a very good concept but just hasn't been delivered perfectly and I really do hope that they fix it. Now I'm not particularly good at giving numbers for this sort of thing but looking back over I've kind of been way too negative uh, and I've been bringing up the same points over and over again so you may have got like a really really negative view of this game but actually something I just wanted to say at the end is that every time you play this game despite it not being the most fast paced with the turrets and stuff you actually come out of playing it in a really good mood and it is actually really really fun to play and also for the £12 that it is, uh, no idea how many dollars that is, I will admit, uh, it is such a good deal and for this sort of game with this sort of length it really really is a really good deal. So it may have a few flaws but everything else does bring it back and bear in mind this is my first review so numbers will kind of depend on this but I'm going to give Sanctum 2 a really really solid 7. I'm just going to do it out of 10 because that's easier for me and I don't really... I don't really see how you can go into like 7.2, I, I mean I've got like a general idea, but it would definitely be a 7, closer to 7.5 maybe, but for the price, if you have been watching the gameplay and you have seen something and you are like, actually this looks really really fun, I, I would definitely recommend going and picking this up. If you're more kind of like, hey, it looks fun, but maybe not right now, or you don't have the money, then wait for a sale, uh, but definitely do try and pick this up at some point. Uh, and even if you don't, and if you're not sure, I would definitely recommend picking up Sanctum 1, which, when this comes out, it's probably going to be like a pound or something. Uh, if you like that, and you enjoy that, then this is just a step up. Graphically, uh, the enemies, the guns, the turrets, maybe not so much, but it is a step up of a game. So, so definitely a solid 7. And then I will base the rest of my reviews on this. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed the gameplay in the background and that the review has been helpful for you. If it's done either of those things, please do like the video uh, and subscribe for more stuff. 
This will probably be going up on my main channel, but if you are into this sort of game and just any other games other than COD, then please do go into the description and subscribe to my second channel where I'll be playing a variety of games over the coming months and doing more of this kind of review sort of stuff and just showing off the other side of gaming. Once again, thank you for watching and I will see you again soon.